uh, just west of I-35, uh, Maysville, we are seeing some large hail, Peola, we got some large hill coming in here, and right now the circulation is going to be just a couple miles northeast of Elmore City. This is going to be just northwest of Winniewood here. You can see we have on the reflectivity right here, rain wrap tornado. It's going to be right here. This is going to be the large hail. Large hail is going to be falling right over Peola there, or Peoli, but still you can see just southwest of the town of White Bead. Mark, we have you live on the phone. What are you seeing? Okay, uh, this is looking uh, a lot larger than it was earlier, and there's a lot of uh, movement. It's, it's still moving east directly towards Falls Valley, basically, on Highway 19. So uh, if you are in the Falls Valley area, this is a good time to get into your shelters. Absolutely. Uh, Mark, we do have spotter confirmation. Okay, there it is. We see your shot. Yeah. That is a significant tornado. A large tornado that is just west of Paul's Valley. So, yes. Paul's Valley, we do need you to uh, uh, go into your safe rooms immediately. Mark, we're going to get you streamed back up in just a second. We do have a very large tornado in Garvin County. This is a brand new tornado warning that was just issued. This is for southeastern McLean County, central Garvin County. And now we are getting back into south central Pottawatomie County. This is a tornado. This is going to be four miles west of Paul's Valley. Four miles west of Paul's Valley. This is moving to the east much faster than the tornadoes up north in the Oklahoma City Metro from hours ago. This is moving to the east at 35 miles per hour. So those of us from Paul's Valley, Stratford, Peola, uh, Peoli, Byers, and White Bead, you are in the path of this storm and you need to take shelter immediately. Again, there is going to be Mark Fricklin, his stream on the right hand side. And this is going to be the tornado right here. It is getting ready to cross over I 35 and it looks like it is going to pass very close to Paul's Valley. Paul's Valley, you do need to be in your Storm shelter immediately. You need to be below ground. You need to be in the innermost room of your home. There is large hail just to the north. This is Peola there. So large hail up to the size of tennis balls. And it looks like traffic may be stopping where Mark Fricklin is. Um, as they may not want to be getting any closer to the storm there. But again, Mark Fricklin is on this tornado warning. Again, Paul's Valley, Peola, especially if you live right in between Peola and Paul's Valley, or Peoli. It's pronounced both ways. In between Paoli and Paul's Valley, you need to be below ground. That does include those of us in Paul's Valley. Again, we do have confirmation of a tornado that is four miles west. is getting ready to cross just right over I-35, in addition to very large hail with this storm. And again, we can see the rotation there is certainly significant. And you can see coming from Mark's shot on the right-hand side of your television screen, the tornado and the rotation is going to be right here, right along State. State Highway 19. This is going to be I-35. As we zoom in even closer here, here is going to be White Bead. Large hail falling right over the community of White Bead. Paul's Valley. Here's the airport. Circulation right here. This is inflow. Circulation right here. And we are getting many reports of this tornado as it continues to move through Garvin County. And looking at the overall path, this is moving to the east at 35 miles per hour. And that will put extreme southeastern McLean County in play, as well as Pottawatomie County in play. But Paul's Valley right now, U.S. Highway 77. This is where the tornado is going to be. And you can see on the right-hand side of your television screen there, certainly we have seen the images coming in uh, from this storm. And again, this is a large tornado, and we are getting rotation with this storm. Looking at how strong this storm is, this storm is going up near 50,000 feet. This storm is near close to 50,000 feet tall there. So this is a very large storm. This is a very unstable environment. This area is still quite warm. And so because the cold front, which is coming through the metro right now, has not pushed down into the Paul's Valley area, this area still has a very high threat for tornadoes. And that's why we still have this tornado warning. And this is coming in to Garvin County. Rusty, I see here that the, uh, this tornado warning is still moving a little bit farther to the east, but we still have Pottawatomie County in it. Uh, yeah, Damon, that's for the northern storm. On this southern storm, guys, uh, in, in whose stream are we looking at right here, by the way? That's Frickland. Okay, so Mark is down in the Pauls Valley area. That's the storm I'm tracking on Advantage Doppler HD. It looks like the center of circulation is going to cross I-35 right over Pauls Valley. If you know anyone who lives in Pauls Valley, you got to get them below ground right now. No one should be traveling on State Highway 19. 
United States Highway 77 or I-35 between Paoli and Paul's Valley. The tornado will be crossing I-35 in that area. This is a very dangerous storm. I'm, I'm seeing winds over 100 miles an hour with it on Doppler HD. So uh, this may not be the strength of the more tornado yet, but this storm is very, very dangerous. Very large hail on the northern side of that. Very heavy rain in the Paoli area. And again, with the amount of rain on the northern side of this, if you live in that area, you're not going to be able to see this tornado coming, though the funnel itself may not be rain wrapped. There is very heavy precipitation on the northern side of this. Again, tornado warning in effect right now for Garvin County. Everything that I've seen indicates that it is on the ground at this present time. Should be crossing I-35 very close to Paul's Valley and then moving east on over towards the Byers and the Stratford area. But again, uh, this is going through a major thoroughfare. Folks are going to probably try and stop underneath the overpasses. You, you can't do that. You shouldn't be traveling in this kind of environment. But if you're listening to us in the Paul's Valley area, you got to get below ground. Paoli, the same thing. A very destructive hail headed your way. Perhaps even the circulation itself. I am uh, detecting it right now, uh, about ready to cross I-35 right over Paul's Valley. There it is. You can see those uh, yellow rings that we have. Uh, that's an indication of the circulation, Damon. So it looks like literally it's gonna it's gonna skip Highway 19, yep. uh, 77, and then cross I-35 right over Paul's Valley. All right. So this is gonna stay just a stone's throw. If, if we can get real close in here, Rusty, you can actually see all the streets that go through Paul's Valley. So this is going to be the airport right here, clearly. Mark there. These are going to be the streets right here. So it looks like northern part of Paul's Valley here. You can see that's where the circulation is still very close. Very, very close here. I mean, we are very much in Paul's Valley here. Ash Street, you can see this is going to be State Highway 19. That is the main road that takes you right into town there. And I-35 is going to be just west of you. Mark Fricklin, we have you on the phone right now. Tell us what you're seeing. Okay, we think we're looking at it. Uh, it's across the highway. Go that way. Go that way. Uh, and it's uh, heading directly into Paul's Valley at the moment and uh, right down the highway. Uh, if there's any traffic uh, in the area, they need to stop. Avoid this at all possible costs, although there is a lot of traffic here that they are not doing that. But um, we're trying to get up ahead of it a little bit and get you a better picture. At okay. This point. Okay, okay, Mark. Well, uh, yeah, and this is going to be a, a, a difficult tornado to see there. Uh, we They did extend the tornado warning, and again, we're, I know the Oklahoma City metro has been impacted by a lot today. More, we've been impacted by a lot. There are search and rescue uh, scenes going on in crews and, 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 uh, and events going on right now. We will get to the damage once the threat for storms is completely over here, okay? However, we still have a dangerous situation, and so we, we are going to talk more about the current situation and the threat for storms. And again, we'll get to the damage and we'll show you those pictures uh, when it's time to do so. However, the time right now is to continue to track these storms. These are very significant storms. And again, Paul's Valley, I'm still seeing uh, what looks to be a very, uh, a very serious situation. Again, moving right on through Paul's Valley. Uh, this rotation is going to be just a couple hundred yards, more than likely just west of you. So again, here's where the uh, rotation is here. Uh, Piola, Pioli, however you want to say it there, goes by both ways large hail tennis ball size hail likely this is going to be the tornado right here this is just about a mile north of the Paul's Valley Airport there the storm moving up to the northeast there and will eventually continue to move up to the northeast and will about put um, it looks like right here a uh, town of Byers that is going to be in McLean County uh, that's gonna put that in play there but this new tornado warning continues now this is until 515 so this is going to be uh, looks like uh, this tornado warning, same one. Again, we're still talking about uh, Garvin County down here. Uh, again, this is a tornado warning. We continue to see a good enough hook echo within this storm uh, and enough rotation that, again, this tornado uh, this is still a, a serious situation. It looks like this tornado is literally going to be, uh, if not just over the northern parts of Paul's Valley, might just be a couple miles uh, northeast of Paul's Valley now. Is this moving much faster than the tornado that went through Moore? Tornado that went through Moore was moving at 20 miles per hour. This is moving right now at 30 35 miles per hour. We still continue to detect circulation. The circulation is now on the east side of I-35. And as we put on a storm track here, this will put in the buyers at 509, Stratford 518. And 
It looks like Venus, Venus there at 528. So 528, those are going to be the, uh, the communities that will be impacted by the storm. And again, you need to seek shelter immediately. You do need to go into your safe room or whatever it is that you have designated as your safe room uh, immediately with the storm. Paul, over to you. Okay, Damon, thank you very much. I want to go over to Betsy Randolph right now. She's with the Oklahoma Highway Patrol. And Betsy, you guys are really dealing with the highways right now. Tell me about what you want folks to do. Well, we have got such a massive uh, devastation that's going on down here in Moore that we've got so many people that are all in the interstate that we cannot get our emergency responders to the scene because we've got so many people tied up in traffic on I-35. We're desperately asking for people to help us out by getting off of I-35 in Moore. That's the south and northbound direction. Especially as they come south, we are blocking traffic, but there's people that are just stopped in traffic on the interstate. Anything, say, south of the Dallas Junction, I-40, I-35, you're not going to get anywhere as you get closer to Moore. So please do us a favor get off the interstate if you see emergency responding uh, emergency responding vehicles you're you're supposed to yield to the right if you move any other direction we're going to have a problem we've had a lot of collisions on the interstate we've got emergency responders trying to get down here to help people that are trapped please get off the interstate i-35 in the moore area and find another alternate route and just don't come down to look at the devastation right now. We've got a lot of people that are still trapped, like I said, and we've asked for emergency responders from the state, all over the state, to respond to this area. So I, I, I heard you say it twice. We, we want to make it very clear. There are people trapped. People are trying to get, your crews are trying to get to these scenes, and people are just all over the highways. We're not just talking about 35. They're, all the feeder roads are a problem as well, right? Absolutely. And, folks, here's the deal. This devastation that you're seeing on the TV, you can see it from the air, it looks even worse on the ground. You're going to be able to see this for days to come. Today is important for you to let the emergency responders get to the scene. You can get your pictures tomorrow, the day after. We've got people, including children, that are trapped in some buildings. And if you're out taking pictures and getting in our way, uh, we're going to have a problem with you. We really need you to stay off the road, stay at home, just watch TV, and you'll be able to see the devastation from there. Send your prayers heavenward because there are people right now fighting for their lives. Betsy Randolph with the Oklahoma Highway Patrol, thank you very much for talking to us. Again, her message very clear. Stay off of the highways. Stay home right now. They are trying to get people. They are trying to get assistance to those people right now. I want to go to KOCO's Morgan Chesky. He joins me now right now. Morgan, you are in the Moore area. What are you seeing? Paul, we are approaching right now on Santa Fe, heading northbound into Moore. And I can tell you it has been gridlock for the past half hour coming in from all routes into the city. We started out at Bethel Acres uh, in that neighborhood that was hit hard yesterday. They evacuated those folks that lived in that area by 3 o'clock due to these storms. And as we started working our way back to the west, we encountered heavier and heavier traffic. I-35 was gridlocked starting in Norman. We worked our way a little bit farther west. And whether it was Western or Santa Fe, traffic is just continuing to pile up. People are trying to get around. They're not able to get there. I've seen a lot of cars stuck on the side of the road, people trying to turn around, getting stuck in the mud. That's just going to make for uh, more problems for everyone trying to get around right now. Uh, the woman sp speaking on the phone a second ago nailed it. People need to stay off the roads. I've seen emergency vehicles have trouble getting around a lot of this traffic. I'm with photojournalist Andrew Donnelly right now, and uh, we are uh, just working our way towards the city. But at the same time, we don't want to get in their way. People uh, just need to be very safe when they're out on the roads today. And uh, right now, all roads into Moore are basically gridlocked. So uh, keep that in mind as you're trying to uh, go out and about uh, uh, following up these storms that came through this afternoon. Paul? Morgan, thank you very much. Now, tell me one more time where you are. You are around the Santa Fe area. Is that what you said? Right. Right now, I'm at 164th and Vicky Drive. Okay. And uh, we're, starting, we're not seeing any of the tornado damage. However, we are seeing signs of heavy winds uh, that have made their way through here. And uh, we, were, we are going to keep you posted. It is definitely a, a tense moment. We were driving by folks and people asking us questions, just how much damage were there. 
people have heard the worst, and we're just working to confirm that the damage that we have been hearing, and we're, we're trying to give people accurate information as it becomes available here and as we work our way into the city. Morgan, thank you very much for the live report there. Morgan Chesky uh, headed to the Moore area just to see some of that devastation to get you some pictures turned around. Of course, there is so much of an area that has been hit. We know the Warren Theater has been hit all in that area. We know much of the area uh, surrounding all of that has been hit as well. We want to go back over to Chief Meteorologist Damon Lane. Damon, we've got weather here still, rain yeah. coming down. You've got uh, Storm in Paul's Value tracking as well. We're, we're still tracking a couple storms. And again, I know a lot of us want to talk about the damage, but the threat for tornadoes is still there. We are going to talk about the now first, that damage, as you just heard, that's going to be there for a while. Okay, but let's talk about the now. And again, this right here, this is going to be a uh, tornado warning. Looks like we're still getting indicated.